so I'm not sure what exactly it all means, but I just got notice that I got prior off approved from my new insurance from my husband for my medicine, so I might be getting my medicine, and I've already cried about it. Um, yeah, I'm just so excited and wanted to share. So I have some great news. I got my medicine. I wish I could say it was like because I heard back from my trial or something, but I just got on my husband's insurance and it was better than Medicaid. Um, but Optum Frontier Therapies, who helped me with this, um, are really great. They like followed up because I had kind of given up. Um, but they sent me an email and were like, hey, just checking in, seeing if you have another insurance to try. And so I sent them the new information and they got back to me and then, um, that they would submit it. And then like two days later, I got a notice that it was approved, um, for prior authorization. And then I, so I sent a follow-up email. I'm like, hey, I got this. What else do I need to do? And then they said, um that your insurance agreed to pay, but I would have to pay $550. But then they have this um, copay card that I just have to pay $5 if I use it. So then I gave them a call, they helped me out, and then I got three bottles delivered the next day for $5. I did cry. <laughs> okay, I'm about to try my soup grade for the first time. So you mix two milliliters with four ounces of water. I don't know how much it matters, like the exact measurement of water, but I did four ounces. Then we'll get the soup grade. Okay, and it says for adults, you have two milliliters, which is two of these little scoops that it comes with. And then you drink half before the meal and then half, halfway through the meal. Okay, we got a sucrose filled meal, fried onion, um, chicken korma and a garlic naan <laughs> okay first taste tastes like nothing well a little bit of something kind of chemically but not strong okay drink half that's <laughs> it Mm. Okay, it's been maybe 10-15 minutes since I ate. I am definitely bloated and um, it's like churning a little bit. So it's that might not be the sucrose because sucrose is usually hours later. But I don't feel good, which is not what I was hoping for. But maybe I just went overboard and did not choose the right thing. So I did get sick. Hello. So, first off, meet George. This is my new puppy. Oh, hi, baby. He's an angel. Anyways, back to sucrose. So, as I mentioned in my last clip, the sucre didn't really work sh 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 for me. So, I had a meeting with my dietitian and she said um, that the dose of sucre can cover, has enough of the enzyme to cover if I drank like over a liter of Coke in one sitting. So that's a lot. So it's not that the sucrate is not enough. So she said it might be starches. And I mentioned starches before. Mm. And I have been eating more like whole wheat pasta, adding oils, fat, protein when I have some starches. Um, and that has definitely, I think, helped. Um, I just started doing that. Um, but the three of the meals that I tried to sucrade with had just normal white starch. So Indian food with a lot of white rice and naan, which is white flour. And then I had pho, which had white rice noodles. And then a sugar cookie, which is white flour. So that's why she thinks it may be the starch that isn't working for me and not the soup grade. So we're doing two experiments, Georgie, two experiments. And today I'm eating no starch and unlimited sucrose and soup grade with every meal. Oh, that's another thing. So sucrose in our body is cumulative. And so that means, <laughs> um, that means that the little amounts that you have throughout the day add up. And the list that I eat off of, what? 
Y es de tu espada. No, es de acuerdo. So sorry. The less that I eat off of is not zero sucrose, because that's pretty much impossible, but it's low sucrose. So the other thing that it could be is that I haven't been taking sucrate with all of my meals, just the high sucrose meals. So by the time that I had those big sucrose meals, my threshold might have been reached through the little ones. So today, no starch, a lot of sucrose, and sucrate with every meal, regardless of the sucrose content of the meal. Tomorrow, I'm not eating sucrose, but I'm gonna have a few meals of like just starch and seeing if I get sick that way. So then we can narrow it down, see what works, see what doesn't, and chase our tails a bit. And then she had, she was like, I have some ideas. So I have another follow-up in two weeks. So we will see what she says. So for high sucrose meal number one, with no starch, I'm making scrambled eggs, some Butterworths, because I don't like um, maple syrup, but I like that syrup, and some maple syrup sausages. <laughs> Woo, sugar! I forgot to film my lunch, but I made a turkey burger with onions and a pear. I ate the pear separately, but um, not feeling well. I got sick after breakfast and right now I'm bloated and my stomach is turning and I feel like I'm about to get sick again. So, I mean, it's kind of validating because I knew that I was still sick and I, I don't really think it's a starch problem because I eat mostly starches always. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and yeah, I'm not feeling well, so. And I forgot to fill my dinner as well, but, um, oh, I did get sick after lunch, so that's great. But I had salmon with brown sugar on top and then bok choy with oyster sauce. I'm still feeling bloated from before and like not good, but I haven't like gotten actively sick yet, so that's good, but yeah. All right, so I didn't actually get sick last night, so that was good. Um, I mean, I didn't feel well, but so this morning I'm doing low sucrose, no sucrate, and lots of starch. <laughs> My favorite. So for breakfast, we got a fancy avocado toast with just avocado, salt, pepper, red chili flakes, and some tomatoes. And a whining puppy. So um, the starch went fine. Um, I don't think I finished showing you my uh, meals, but it was just lots of um, like pasta. Um, but that went fine. I didn't feel really sick at all that day, which is what I thought. But, um, and then, so I emailed and she was like, are you sure you're taking it right? Which is kind of annoying to be asked over and over again because it makes me feel like she thinks I'm stupid. <laughs> I know she doesn't, but like, this is a frustrating process for me. And the fact that she's like, okay, just like triple checking, you're doing it right, you're keeping it in the fridge. And I'm like, yes, I'm not an idiot. Um, so working through those emotions, <laughs> but, um, so she said, said that we should try, I needed to try like just simple sugar. So like literally just sugar, um, to, with something I know that I can tolerate, which I thought I did, um, in the other experiment, but I guess I didn't because some of those meals had FODMAP, FODMAP stuff in them. Um, I'm not really sure what exactly those are. I know that they, I've looked into them previously like a while ago in college, but I don't remember. And um, I know that they are like a lot of the sim same foods, I think. And it's also a very large list of foods that are FODMAP or high in FODMAPs. So not looking forward to that journey because I feel like that's on the horizon. But today I tried the simple sugar. I had oats and brown sugar with sucrate and then um, I just had some Reese's trees with sucrate to see if I can tolerate just sucrose with the sucrate um, to see if that is indeed the, the problem or if the FODMAPs could be the problem. So, so far no symptoms today, which is mixed emotions for me because I was like, it doesn't work for me, la la la. But I guess it does work, but there are just in most high sucrose foods, there are also high in FODMAPs. Um, I have a, an appointment with her tomorrow, so I will learn more about it, but the journey just keeps on keeping on. Hello, happy new years. Coming to you with an update. So I met with my dietitian and we did 
come to the conclusion that the sucre does work for the sucrose intolerance, but there's something else going on. So unfortunately, a lot of foods that are high in sucrose are also, sorry, George is playing with a little off. Get him, Georgie. Oh yeah. <laughs> he does this about twice a day at least, just runs around with him. Anyways, so unfortunately foods that are normally high in sucrose are also high in FODMAPs. And those are just like basically, I don't know that much about them, but just basically triggering foods for people with IBS or other, you know, intestinal things um, or other like food insensitivities, stomach issues. So now we are going on a FODMAP reintroduction journey, trial and error. Um, so they're in different groups. And so I'm gonna try reintroducing, she gave me a workshop, a worksheet with this information. And I'm going to introduce one group at a time, once a day with other foods that I know I can tolerate to see if it works. And also I can eat some high sucrose foods that are low in FODMAPs. So trying to expand my diet in that way. So, so far I've tried wheat because I did that high starch, low sucrose thing and that worked. So wheat is great. Um, there's the wheat is under fructans and there's the wheat. Um, and then there's garlic and onion. So I haven't tried those two, but wheat is good. I tried um, another one that the trial food was avocado had avocado toast, felt fine the rest of the day, so that's good. So basically now every day I'm just gonna try a new um, FODMAP group and see if that makes me sick. So, more trial and error. So basically what's happening is sucrose, yes, I have CSID, and the sucrate works for sucrose, but there's something else going on. So we're trying this FODMAP reintroduction testing thing to see um, what else the culprit is. Just chilling here with my Georgie. Um, oh, sorry. Um, there's a hump. Um, so I tried garlic today, which is under the fructan category. There's wheat, garlic, and onion. And I feel very bloated. Haven't had any, like, unfortunate bowel movements, but I am very bloated, and that happened kind of instantly. So, killing us. So I tried my... Sweet potato trial yesterday, um, which is for one of the polyols thing, and that went well, so that's good. Um, I'm trying my onion trial this afternoon. I'm expecting to have bloating like I did with um, the garlic, but who knows? I'm thinking also I might try um, the garlic with something else because I had it with green beans, and I don't really remember I don't feel like I get normally bloated with green beans, but they're also beans, so they might make me bloated. So I might try garlic with something else because I really want to be able to eat garlic. But trials are still continuing and doing well. Though I will say that this like process, I mean this entire journey has been emotionally exhausting, but it's just really hard to always have to like pay attention to how you feel after you eat. It's like definitely triggering for my eating disorder, but it's like, it's just, like, I just want to be able to eat and not worry about it and not think about it, you know? So it's, like, always having to monitor, oh, am I, like, am I bloated? Do I have to go to the bathroom? Like, it's hard and it's exhausting. Um, yeah, this isn't a fun process. It's exciting when things go well, but then also you're like, oh, am I, do I feel sick now? So it's just, like, and like, so in truth, I had to redo my sweet potato trial because... I ate it two or three days ago and I'm still feeling a little bit weird from the fructose trial because that didn't go well. Hi, <laughs> Georgie. Um, and I had a sweet potato and I was still hungry and so I had a chicken salad wrap that I had made myself, which technically should be good, but then I started feeling sick and I was bloated and I was like, I don't know what made me sick. I don't know. And it was probably just residual from the fructose because I didn't like wait long enough even though it was the day before. Um, because it went fine the next day with a sweet potato. But, uh, it's hard. It's hard. But something that has been exciting is that I have been eating um, some high sucrose, low FODMAP things like corn. So I had corn tortillas yesterday with some Mexican food and I felt fine after. I had a churro with Nutella. Oh, 
always too great, obviously. But, um, yeah, and I felt good. So that's exciting. So at least, like, the soup grade works. And I am bringing more things into my diet that I did miss. So that is exciting. Um, yeah. I will confess that this is, like, a little scary for me. Only because I'm, like, it's triggering eating disorder wise to not have to restrict because then I'm like, what will happen to my weight? Um, cause I definitely have lost some weight in this process. So that is just, just sharing that that is coming up. Um, but we're going to be okay and we're going to enjoy food and celebrate that I can eat more things than I previously was. So my onion is actually going well. It has been like three hours and I feel good. Woo my peas went well today. I tried the GOS, which I don't even know what it stands for. Um, and I had a bowl of peas for lunch and I didn't get sick or bloated. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little gassy, but I had an entire bowl of peas. But this is exciting. I feel like, I mean, fructose makes sense because that's what I was originally diagnosed with. So that makes sense why that made me sick. But I need to try garlic again because everything else has been fine. So maybe fun maps aren't a thing. Maybe it was just a weird day, which my dietitian said. And I was like, no. But maybe she was right. Oh, so sorry. He got his toy stuck under the island. Are you okay, Toji? So a wild thing happened yesterday. I had Indian food and I didn't get sick. Like, what? I mean, obviously, I had soup with it. But maybe it was just a weird fluke that I tried it um, that one day that I tried everything and I got sick f with everything. I don't know. But it was very exciting. What did you It is exciting. It is exciting. Yeah, mommy, you did Indian food. <gasps> yeah! Crazy. Right? Does you touchy? What's that? What's that? What's that? Oh, is it you? Is it you touchy? So I did my second garlic trial and I had it with potatoes this time in soup grade and I did get bloated immediately. So I think garlic is just a no-go, but it's only garlic and fructose that I can't have um, of all the stuff I tried. So that's not too bad. <laughs> So I sent my results of the FODMAP trials to my dietitian, and she said that um, she wants me to be tested for SIBO again, which is the small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, which I was positive for and I took antibiotics to treat. But she says based on my results, she thinks it might be that again, because oftentimes it doesn't fully go away after the first time or it can be recurring. So she's actually mailing me a test, which is great because I don't live in the city anymore. So we shall see what that tells us. So I just got my refill of Sucrate and this time they came in single dose packages, which is so exciting because they can stay in room temperature for three days, which is amazing. So much easier for um, traveling and stuff. So I'm so excited about them. Also just, yeah, just like so much easier for traveling. And the packaging is really cool because they come in this, I mean, obviously well refrigerated, but look, it's this, ice pack and it is plant food so you can either pour it down the drain or um put it in your garden which is very cool i wanted to share a few of the gadgets i got hi judgy <laughs> um for traveling with my medicine it's a little obsolete now that i have the single use but still helpful this is especially still helpful it's a rubbery um um measuring cup that goes right up to four ounces exactly what i need you can squish you can put it in your purse this is really helpful because you have to mix the medicine with four ounces of water i also got these um little travel bottles they haven't leaked on me yet um the measuring isn't really helpful um for sucrate but that's okay uh, i came in a pack of three helpful for traveling and then this is a frio case it's for um insulin but basically instead of an ice pack you put it you soak this like the one of the little beads in it in water for like 15 minutes and then it keeps it cool with like the evaporation of the water so you put your medicine in here put that in there and then put that in there lastly i got this 
cute little igloo like fanny pack. Um, it's a cooler. Obviously it kind of looks like a cooler, but it's also kind of cute and I've worn it as a purse. So I'm still waiting on my SIBO test. Um, I ordered it, but apparently they're like backed up. So still waiting for that. Um, but I'm really excited about this new Sucrade to try. Um, yeah, it's going well. Sucrade is going well. I'm still not like, this week has actually been pretty bad stomach wise. Um, I'm stressed, so that doesn't help, but um, yeah, I also hope you notice a quality difference. I got a real camera. So yeah, don't want to have to use or look at my uh, blurry iPhone footage. I'm still learning how to use it, but oh god, it's falling on my puppy. So you want to say hi, Daddy? You? you say hi? Oh, that's good. Just for the brand names. Brand names. This is Allermates for the bottles, and then Frio. Um, I th everything I got on Amazon except the Frio. I think I got on the actual th the website. This is. OXO and then igloo. So it's been like maybe a month since um, they tried to order my SIBO test. I still haven't gotten it. Um, I can't remember if I mentioned this, but I reached out to them and they're like, oh, you need to put it in again. And then, but then my doctor's office reached out to them and they said that they were just like backed up. But it's very unfortunate because I feel like my symptoms have been getting worse. I feel like my stomach is reactive more when I'm eating. Um, almost every meal I'm getting sick again so that's frustrating and I really just want to like get the test so then I can get treated for this so that's an unfortunate update but yeah so I am still waiting on my SIBO test I was supposed to get it well apparently it was shipped on like January 17th and apparently it was delivered but I am always home and I never got it so I've been trying to reach out trying to request new ones and they're like oh yeah we have and I never got it. So I decided to find a gastroenterologist here um, and just basically start the process over, not completely obviously, but I, now I have this information um, and to try to figure out what else is going on because unfortunately my s symptoms are continuously getting worse and now every time I eat, it feels like I'm just eating sucrose again. So yeah. <laughs> The journey continues. I will update when I have new information, but I've dragged this on long enough, so I'm just gonna stop this video and then start new with a new gastroenterologist. I hope this was helpful. Um, not that I shared much real information, but um, yeah, thank you for following along this tummy journey, and yeah, I'll update you when I have more information.